Well, about a year ago, it was a year ago, probably April, I bought this um, Century Model CT1 off of um, eBay and never really got a chance to power it up until yesterday, actually. I didn't have a, well, I didn't think I had a power cord for it. It's got one of those um, non polarized two pin plugs. I started looking around the other day. I was in one of my drawers looking for something, and I noticed that the uh, plug for my old IBM ThinkPad from the late 90s actually is a two pin, and I thought, hmm, I wonder if that'll fit. Sure enough, it does. So I powered this up yesterday, and you can't see just off camera, I've got my little Variac that. Um, I originally powered this thing up for anything like this. This is about a 1958 to 1960 vintage, somewhere in that area. Um, you always want to bring the power up slowly, and actually, probably what you actually want to do is to, um, at the very least, replace all the electrolyte capacitors before you power something like this up. I didn't do that. Um, I put a pretty light, fast blow fuse in my Variac. One thing I definitely need to do that I don't have yet is I need to um, build myself an isolation transformer for doing this kind of work. But powered it up and slowly brought the voltage up over a span of about an hour. Just run it up about 20 volts at a time. And it seemed to work just fine. I didn't have any issues with it as far as blowing any capacitors up. Now, back when I was about oh, 14 or 15 years old, I actually did um, blow up a 1940s vintage, I can't remember, it was a Hickok maybe, it's been, no, it was, it was 30 years ago, but not knowing any better at that age, grabbed the power cord, plugged it in, kaboom, and I had parts blown up everywhere inside that thing, and I wish I had kept it, because today I probably could have been able to actually do something about it, but back then I just looked at it like, holy cow, and threw it in the garbage. Which, you know, now I'm thinking 30 years hindsight, I'm thinking, man, what a waste. I probably could have done something with it. But anyways, plug this thing in and can't seem to get the full opening on the iTube and downloaded the manual for it on the Internet. And they have a zero calibration procedure in here. Um, set the right hand switch to the upper position, turn the quality control for fully clockwise to short, which I did. Um, rotate quality control counterclockwise until the switch clicks. Okay, that, that turns the power on. It'll take a few seconds for that tube to light up. And then plug leads into test jacks and short clips together. I don't have any pin type leads for this at the moment, so I just took fairly heavy gauge wire and jammed it in there. And now I should be able to rotate to find adjust control until the eye is at its widest opening. Well, that just doesn't happen. It doesn't. I think that, op that should open all the way. I believe, or you'll have like a small line right there, and right there as those as those two eyes close together, or whatever you want to call it. But I can't get that. And then you're supposed to, wherever your zero is, you're supposed to turn the dial to match that. But I really just don't get that. So not totally sure what's going on here, but one thing that I am going to do. And I already pulled this apart off camera previous to starting this video, and I checked that um, input electrolyte capacitor, and it looks pretty leaky to me. It's a 50 microfarad, 450 volt. I don't have one that same value, but I do have a 100 microfarad, um, 450 volt that I'm going to plug in there and see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't go kaboom. but. Um, I'm going to shut this all off now and allow it a long enough time to bleed off and then I'm going to pull this apart and replace that capacitor and then I'll probably test the old one with my um, Huntron just to see what it looks like. So I'll be back in a little bit. Well, I've got the 
capacitor replaced, here's what the original one was. It's actually a 20 microfarad 350 volt mica mold, old, old electrolytic. Um, this capacitor is showing pretty lousy, not very good at all. Um, I had the 100 microfarad that I was going to put in there but I couldn't quite get the leads to stretch out far enough and I wasn't I didn't know if 100 was going to be a little bit too much for this so I've got three 8 microfarads tied in parallel which will give me which gives me right around 30 or so I'd actually measured at let's put it this way it actually measured at about 30 microfarads they were all each one was a little bit higher than 8 and rated for 450 volt as well. This is rated 350 working voltage. So actually this was probably originally been rated at say 450 volt or so. But anyways, I'm gonna screw this thing back together and see what happens. Before I do though, let me show you how this uh, ended up. This old mica mold 60 year old capacitor ended up testing. old 10 capacitance meter here. Okay, I'm on the 200 microfarad scale, so the next scale up's 20, so that would possibly be beyond. Okay, not getting a good number there. Not getting a good number there. Really not there either. 200 nanofarad range, so basically this 20 microfarad capacitor is only testing at about 14 nanofarads. Um, let's see, I go to the 20 nanofarad range, yep, approximately 13.8, 13.9 nanofarads. So obviously um, this electrolytic wasn't really filtering much of anything, so that may or may not help cure my problem, but eventually what I'm going to do with this, and this is a, kind of like one of the, some of my other electronics projects, I'm just spending a little bit of time on this now and then maybe this winter I'm going to completely recap this with high precision caps and then also I'm going to replace all the resistors with high precision 1% resistors and see if I can't get something that's fairly usable for modern day with you know a retro look so I'll put this thing back together and fire it up and slowly run my Variac up in case for some reason these capacitors I put in aren't much good either and we'll see what happens Okay, I've got her back together and I've already run it up with the Variac and nothing went kaboom and I've already actually checked it out and I'll show you what the results are here. Turn this, flip this thing on with the jumper wire across there and turn to the short and then the range or the value scale doesn't matter according to the instructions that I have. So I'll flip this thing on takes a little bit to warm up. Now as you can see with that all the way down now the, the uh, tube is much brighter a much brighter green and then also with it all the way down it's completely closed. I can run this up now I can get that eye to open pretty decent but not all the way. Now I don't really haven't run one of these things very much so I'm not totally certain that that eye should open the whole way but I'd almost have to think it would but it's a lot closer to the zero point now is at the uh, maximum eye opening so I'm not sure I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on one of these and see if that's how it works out or not you turn that to zero and the eye opens all the way there's some other tests I need to try on this but it's definitely made some improvement and I guess until I completely recap this thing I don't know if there's anything else I need to do on it. I'm going to put some, like I said, I'm going to put precision film caps on this, modern precision film caps and then also modern precision resistors in there and try and make this into an actual usable unit. I'm not sure what function today it would really have but 
that's kind of a neat little thing and maybe once I do get it to where it works correctly maybe I'll either keep it put on my shelf or sell it or whatever else so anyway just thought I'd show that to you Oh, while I have this thing out, one thing I decided to try was the uh, leakage test on here, which may be one of the few funky functions that I would be using very often. Um, I've got the uh, switch on the elect the switch on the left or on the right connected to high leakage, and then you're supposed to press this down for three seconds and then let up. The eye will open and then it'll slowly close. If the capacitor is leaky, then it'll open. It may open, not open at all, or it may open and close really quickly. So let's see what happens here. One, two, three. See that it opens up about as far as I've been able to open it, and it slowly closes up. I guess what you'd have to do is that's a I think a 10 microfarad capacitor I have there, you'd have to probably compare that with other ones that are equivalent equivalent capacitance, equivalent voltage. Let's see how it worked, but you know, that's just another test you can do on this. And while I was at it, I thought that I would hook this thing up to my Huntron tracker. And sure enough, you've got the dreaded tilted circle which pretty much signifies that this thing is no good. So, yeah, I gotta do a little bit more experiment with that test around. I'm not totally certain of how all the functions work on it, but there's no doubt about it that electrolytic was bad, and once I recap it and everything, hopefully I can have a useful piece of test equipment out of it.